Las Vegas, Nevada, home to the world-famous Las Vegas Strip, countless casinos, and now home to the storied Silver State Race. Held at the brand-new state-of-the-art RC tracks of Las Vegas, this race has attracted racers from across the globe who will win the inaugural Silver State Race at this brand-new facility. Would this Silver State bear any resemblance to events from years past? You know, the, the Silver State is the Silver State. You know, it's like just this extreme, blown out, wind, tents blowing. You just knew that when you came to Silver State, you were just gonna be miserable for five days. And... I know we all don't miss the weather out there, that's for sure. It gets super windy and hot. Rain, snow we've had before. I mean, you just know that it's just a, a race that tests your actual want to race RC cars. But no, they're, they're doing an awesome job out here at RC Tracks Las Vegas. It's, they, I mean, it's a top-notch facility for sure. You can tell they really wanted to, to show that they're proud of this place. You know, there's a lot of pride in here, which is nice to see most RC, some RC tracks, you don't see that. But when it's all said and done and you head back to the hotel at the end of the night, it's, it's really enjoyable and, and uh, glad that we're here and not in Boulder City. It's fantastic. It's by far probably one of the best I've ever been to. I mean, they've gone all out with the driver's stand, pits, track. I mean, it's, yeah, it's awesome. I think everyone really thinks it's good. The track's awesome. Facility's amazing. Uh, we can see the strip from the driver's stand, so, I mean, even a bad day here is still going to be a good day later. It's cool to see the Silver State kind of back on the map and, you know, a, a tremendous turnout and response from people that, that have been here for the first time, so hats off to them. Confidence. In racing, it's the most valuable tool a driver can have at his side. Everyone wants it. With confidence comes speed. Given that the pro drivers compete against each other less than a dozen times per season, each win is valuable. Momentum's huge in, in any sport. Um, you know, obviously having confidence in not only the products that you have, but also your own ability. Uh, there's so many guys that are so close and have the ability to win that it's almost like once you kind of break through and get that first win or a good result, other good results follow. If your stuff's good and you're going good, it's, yeah, you can roll into another race and hopefully keep your thing going. Uh, the mental side's huge, you know, having confidence in yourself, whether it be driving or setup changes or tire choice, I think is really, really important. If you have confidence in yourself and, and you know that you've been doing well, you don't even have to have the best equipment. You're just driving off pure adrenaline. But that's why a lot of guys like to club race a little bit, you know, get a win or whatever and just build your confidence up a little bit. If you have a really bad first run, it's uh, very difficult to mentally prepare yourself to put the pressure on yourself that you have to do good the next run. That's a difficult part, so the momentum is very, very important. kind of carries you a little bit. Um, but it does give more pressure too. If you're expected to win, it's the more pressure and you have to deal with that also. Earlier this year at the 16th annual Nitro Challenge, Ty Tessman, current IFMAR world champion, saw his Truggy Dynasty end. The grueling five-day event also saw him lose the buggy title. In both classes, mechanical failures were the culprit. I was in the lead and I just kind of got robbed a bit from what I thought I could do. And Truggy was a good battle the whole time. I'm kind of bummed I didn't win that, but it's just another race and it's not end all to be all. So you just you got to keep going at each race and do your best every time and don't really take too much from the last race. I think, you know, last year was an epic year for Proline and I don't know if we'll ever be able to top it. You know, we won pretty much every race and uh, it does seem that every time somebody wins a world championship, so maybe a little bit of kind of bad luck follows them around for a little while. but. Uh, you know, it's like anything. I mean, you're going to have your ups and your downs, and it's just how you handle it and regroup and, and go back out there and try to win. Still one of the most sought-after victories, the Nitro Challenge saw an unprecedented turnout, making it even more challenging. This year, Ryan Mayfield took the coveted buggy title. He has earned two major victories in this very young season. Some people get on a hot streak, and they, you know, they keep riding it, and they, they use it as a... Um, kind of like a mental toughness or whatever, you know what I mean? Just a little bit of an advantage, I guess. But for me, I try not to do that. I just, it's one race at a time. You never know what's gonna happen. You never know who's gonna be fast. Um, you just gotta come here and, and do everything you normally do and see how you stack up every weekend. 
with titles at the Reedy Race as well as the Nitro Challenge, wins are stacking up for Ryan. He starts off Silver State by being the fastest driver after seeding practice. Incumbent champion Kyle McBride is continuing his winning ways from last year's event. He and his prototype RC8.3 are sitting in second after seeding practice. Last year I kind of did the same thing. I didn't really come in with any expectations. Just go out there, run as best as I can. And um, yeah, I'm not really feeling any pressure this year. Just do the same thing and um, hopefully have a good race. It's a huge race. I mean, everyone's here. The, the World Championships are going to be here next year. So it's pretty important. So if I can win this year, yeah, I'll be really happy. Also having practice success is Adam Drake. He currently sits in fifth spot. A good showing considering Adam is in uncharted waters with a new team, a new chassis, and virtually an entirely new race program. After 15 years as a driver with TLR, they severed their ties with Adam Drake, creating what in other sports would be referred to as a free agent frenzy. It was pretty crazy. I mean, obviously it was kind of an emotional roller coaster after being with one company for so long. Um, but there was a tremendous amount of support from friends and family and just people within the industry. So th that part of it was really good. I mean, I grew a lot closer to a number of people and, um, you know, when it was all said and done, it's, it's been really fun and, and enjoyable. But I'm not really the type of person to like, you know, oh, look at me or let's everyone talk about me. You know, I kind of do my own thing and um, so it was, I don't know. At the end of the day, it was really nice, but I wouldn't say that I was like excited for the attention uh, because of the circumstances. So far, Silver State has not been kind to Ty. He is significantly off the pace and is struggling. He ends practice in the B grouping, not something that Team Tessman is used to. Okay, it's only practice. The first ever Silver State race at RC Tracks of Las Vegas is about to begin. Jimmy Babcock kicks off the festivities with the driver's meeting. Actually, while you're out there to kind of search the track and find your number, most of you should know what your car number is by now. This gives everyone another up-close look at the track, examining it for wear. This track's predecessor, the Boulder City Track, was notorious for disintegrating. While not the same dirt as Boulder, the question on everyone's mind was, would it break apart? After a disappointing Nitro challenge, Team Tessman is out to redeem themselves and build up some much needed confidence. Ty does exactly that by TQing round one of the Truggy class. I saw Mayfield behind me, so I just kind of paced myself a bit on him and started to pull away a little bit and then just tried to not crash and not drive too hard and just finish the race, basically. Even though the layout is not the most challenging, it offers difficulty in other areas. Um, I don't think you can make up time. You just, you can lose time everywhere. Just by overshooting corners, uh, getting crossed up a bit because you push too hard, you get loose. It's so open and fast that nobody's really making a lot of mistakes. So it's not like places where you can just put punch it and then make up time. It'll be Ty Tessman. 
15-7-11, your TQ of round number three. At the conclusion of Treggy qualifying, Ty had TQ'd two of the three qualifying rounds. The real question is, would any of his success in Truggy spill over to the buggy class where he struggled in practice? How's your run? It was all right, I didn't make any mistakes, but uh, just kind of loose. Uh, just driving as fast as I could, but maybe look at the track and test it also the next round. Round one left Ty disappointed. Ryan Cavallari, on the other hand, with swagger and prototype car in hand, would earn the hard fought TQ in the first round. Success at a Nitro race was more than welcome in the Cavalieri camp as last season, with the exception of the Worlds, he struggled to make A mains consistently. One of the big surprises in this young season has been Kyosho's Jared Tebow. He came out strong in the first round. Simply put, he was on fire. Uh, the new engine program's amazing. They're running really, really good. Um, just kind of lowered my stress level a little bit at the races. Last year I was just a little bit burnt out and you know trying to trying to find the right balance between family and work and racing and trying to find the fun. So yeah this year I've been driving more and trying to have more fun at the races. He quickly built up a lead in the first round of buggy qualifying. It appeared to be unpenetrable but a few mistakes would propel a hard charging Cavalieri into the lead. Once I kind of was in the top three I could just I don't know, I've kind of put it together a little bit stronger uh, halfway through and just was trying to catch up to Tebow. He was, you know, a second and a half in front of us and me and Mapo were like really close together. We started like, he started right behind me. So I kind of knew how far he was behind me. So I just kind of paced off that and uh, he kind of was a little bit stronger at the beginning. And then I would say I was a little bit stronger at the end. And then Tebow just had a little uh, ball wall at the end and we were able to get around him. It's been a while since I've been, uh, a top qualifier at a Nitro event, so definitely have the speed nowadays with the new car and uh, the prototype car has been awesome this whole entire year. Uh, at the halfway point of qualifying, the track begins to show its similarities to the Boulder track. A large number of entries is taking its toll on the surface, which is now beginning to show significant signs of wear especially in acceleration and landing zones. Uh, you know, it's, the track's definitely gaining a little bit of character, but considering the turnout, the, the track's holding up tremendous. With 500 plus entries qualifying outlast the daylight, the sun sets, the lights go on, and the drivers are set for some nighttime racing action. The entire second round of qualifying would be run under the lights, revealing what has to be the most impressive backdrops in all of RC the Las Vegas Strip. A new setup for young Ty. Would he turn it around this heat? As before, a clean run, but Ty's car struggled to carry its speed through the bumpy sections of the track. Lap after lap, he falls further and further off the pace of the top drivers. Both Drew Moeller and Kyle McBride would see success in round two. Drew, with a solid effort, would take third. It was good. Uh, my Nitro buggy is really good, so uh, I'm happy about that. We're going to change some tires and stuff like that for uh, next round, so. It's getting there, so overall it's good for good first day. Kyle, running the associated prototype car, would see his best qualifying round so far, finishing second overall. The ride was a little, rough, a little low, I think. I don't know, it was uh, not really handling the bumps as good as I wanted it to. And I didn't have as much steering as I would have liked. But apart from that, it was, it was pretty good. Would this be the boost in confidence Kyle needs to improve his qualifying position over last year's race? Ryan Mayfield, capitalizing on a poor run by Ryan Cavallari, would come out and dominate this round. This propelled him into a tie with former teammate Ryan Cavallari. Would we see a rehash of the Ryan and Ryan show tomorrow and in the mains on Sunday? Two minutes to the start of the one race. More qualifier. That's all we can do. Saturday morning, another epic desert sunrise. This day, we'll see the final round of qualifying. Should have gone lighter oil for sure. So, if your car is getting upset through the bumps because of, um, 
because it's a chassis hitting, then any spark might help. Gordon Ty are at it early. They are trying to find a shock package that will work on the challenging track. They are not alone. It's not as bad as the old track was, but man, it's starting to get some crazy bumps like right in the middle, right when everybody would start jumping on the brakes. So it smacks the, the rear of the car on the ground and front flips are pretty common right now if you don't catch it. There's parts that are pretty smooth still, but then there's parts that are getting pretty rough. So. Uh... Yeah, the track's definitely getting bumpy. Uh, I think it's going to actually make for better racing because it's going to allow to be a little more racy, guys making some mistakes in the bumps, and uh, it should be really good. Uh, it's getting a little rough. It's not near as bad as the old track, but much better than that. But yeah, we're struggling to get through the bumps with any kind of speed, for sure. Ty, the reigning world champion, continues to struggle in round three. We're gonna try some more stuff on the nitro car. We need a good run of nitro. We're really, really sucking right now. Uncharacteristic mistakes plague his run. His struggles are not limited to the track. In the pits, he and Gord struggle to develop a workable setup. He's not handling the bumps as I'd like it. and being all crazy. So we're gonna figure something out and then run it in the warm up and hopefully it's better. Has the pressure of following up a world championship title gotten to the young Canadian? You expect more out of yourself. People expect you to do well after that and I think you know that. And it's difficult just to get your mindset back into not thinking about that. But that's probably one of the hardest things that there's to do. So I mean, yeah, it's, it's tough. It's really hard to get out of that funk. It took me you know, maybe a year before I actually won again after that. A seventh place run as Team Tessman turned it around in the late goings of the Silver State. I wouldn't say turn it around. We made a hard right, but not turn it around yet. We're getting there though. Nevertheless, Ty has managed to squeak into Sunday's A main final. As the track conditions continue to deteriorate, it becomes clear that even though qualifying is done, the race is far from over. Could we see an unexpected face in the A main, like local driver Dylan Rodriguez? Back before the track, we'd run maybe once a month, if even that, maybe once or twice a month. So it's nice to be able to actually practice. I feel like the, the Dirt Nitro Challenge was like a kind of like an eye opener, you know, I, I, don't, I don't feel like I would have been able to do that before, before this track opened. We didn't actually get together, he messed up the double, I went to the inside, and then some dude clipped me and sent us all four of us over. I knew it was a big mess. For now, there is no Cinderella story to tell about Dylan. He is embedded deep in the C main. So like the Nitro Challenge, Dylan looks to be set to play the bump game yet again. Went a little better than the other round. Um, actually able to get a clean run in and salvage a top 10 or top 15 for each of the runs, so that was nice. A B main in truck and C main in buggy. But only got one good round in, so we'll be bumping up. Also struggling is former world champion Cody King. Due to lack of consistency, he is barely holding on to an A main spot. Up and down. Uh, I had a good start to the day yesterday and then just struggled a little bit later in the day. Then today I was on a really good run and I had a little bobble. I think I still got like a six for the round or so, but it's going all right. It's fun. Incumbent champion Kyle McBride isn't quite as dominant as he would like. However, he has improved his starting position for the main over last year's event. I ended up ninth in truck and third in buggy. So I was fifth last year in buggy, so it's uh, two steps up from last year. So I'm pretty happy overall. I think by the time the mains come around, it's going to be probably almost as rough as last year. Surprising many, including himself, Kyle's teammate Ryan Cavallari was the fastest in round three and has secured the buggy TQ for the event. I'm pretty excited. It's been a while since I've TQ'd a uh, Nitro event. Uh, cars been working great all year, so you know everyone from the guys back at work and all the guys here, we put a good uh, amount of effort in, and the car is working extremely well throughout the entire day. So 
the first round went really well and the second round yesterday didn't go so well underneath the lights but then today we kind of came back and uh, came back out on top with a third place qualifying effort kyle is in a better position than last year's event would we see a back-to-back -back champion or would the win fade away as long as you're up there in the front at the start that's uh pretty key to being there at the end The lower mains begin on Saturday afternoon. Truggies are run first, followed later by buggies. With longer races, watering of the track becomes much less frequent. The track really begins to tear itself apart. Some ruts are so deep that one cannot help but draw the parallel to the trench run scene from Star Wars. Stay on target. We're too close. Stay on target. <laughs> Probably don't need to go heavier because it's going to be cooler, right? Yeah. I'll just wait, though, to change it. Yeah. Last night, it didn't cool off. None of the pro drivers have left. They have remained to prep their cars for Sunday's mains. Tomorrow, they will be gladiators. Today, they are researchers and engineers. Water would be, like, so thin. But I'm already running quite a bit softer than what yours are, so... Wrenching continues well into the night. Tomorrow we will see who the 2015 Silver State Champion will be. Will this event serve as a preview for the IFMAR Worlds held here next year? The day starts off with the B main being postponed by unwelcome guests. A swarm of bees. That's right, bees. You can't make this up. Anyways, a swarm of bees has made their home in the infield landscaping. Bee handlers are called in and soon remedy the situation. The bee mains are ready to go. Both Dylan and Adam had to work their way into the Truggy A by bumping out of the bee main. Will the extra track time be an advantage? Jared surveys the track one last time before the Truggy A main. Yeah, it's getting rough. It's, you know, it kind of goes through stages. I think some of the holes now are kind of cupping out a little bit more, so they're not quite as sharp. 12th on the grid from Should be good. Ohio. Pit crews make their way to pit lane. Drivers prepare themselves and get in the zone. Truggies roll out onto the track. The tension rises. The early action takes on an unusually ferocious pace. Ryan Lutz and Ty Tessman have broken away from the pack early. Can they maintain this pace for another 40 minutes?
If Ty's Truggy had a rearview mirror, it would be full of a Lutz. The two race each other hard in the early goings of the Truggy final. Gord watches nervously. Who would crack first? Lutz would. Ty capitalizes and pulls away from Ryan. Ty tore around the track with very few mistakes until he runs out of fuel in the middle of the track. A flame out. This would drop Ty off the lead lap. He was deep in the back. Yeah, they're Never giving up, Team Tessman continues to battle as hard as they can. But was it too late? Dylan would also have troubles in the Truggy final. His motor has expired. Had a bad Conrad on the motor and didn't let go. Went in for pit and went back out and lost the motor, no more. Just got tired. <laughs> He does have bad luck, but at least he made the show. It's all good. In the dying minutes of the final, Ty was still outside a podium spot. He had worked his way up as high as fourth. Another flame out would drop him again. He would finish in the sixth position. While not the fastest on the track, Ryan Mayfield was one of the few drivers to have a clean run. He would inherit the lead for the final time in the last five minutes of the race and take the Truggy win. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. That was a long race. Um, I didn't have the fastest truck, but I knew just how I could keep, keep the consistent laps. I had the fuel mileage strategy on my side uh, against Lutz anyways. Um, I knew if Ryan and uh, Jared started battling at the end, I just had to keep putting my laps together, and that's that's what happened. They got a, I got a little distance on them. And Ryan was super fast. Lutz was super fast. He's driving really good, and uh, you know he had a little bit of a problem in the pits, and I just uh, drove a clean race. That, that's all it took, and uh, it, it feels good. It feels good to first big win with the AT 3.0, um, and I'm stoked. It's a, this is a crazy event, crazy race to, to try to win, and um, I'm looking forward to buggy now. I think with this track, even from 10th, I think he has a chance because a lot of people are crashing. I'm excited again, not so bummed out. He came and tested like a month ago and everything was good and stuff, but we, he didn't really expect on TQ. Yeah, so far uh, the year's been really good. Podiums are always great, but uh, I need some wins here pretty soon. Fire Ryan Cavallari gets a clean start. He only gave up first spot to Ryan Mayfield for a few laps before regaining it. He was uncontested for the bulk of the race. Unfortunately, this lulled him into a false sense of security. A seemingly reinvented Tebow was charging hard. Capitalizing on mistakes by Cavallari, he would inherit the lead, but would he be able to keep it to the end? Uh, you know, it took a while to catch Ryan, and then when I got in the lead, I really just couldn't believe I was in the lead. And and then I started making a couple mistakes after that. So like the last five minutes, I really just told myself just to 
drive like it was just a practice day, like we weren't even racing, you know, just to enjoy the track. I really enjoyed the layout when it was bumpy. And so yeah, I was just trying to just have fun driving my car. Ty, starting from the 10th spot, has already worked his way up to the 6th spot. With a lap time 6 tenths off the pace of Tebow and Cavallari, a win seems unlikely. 10, With each subsequent lap, a podium spot looks more and more feasible. Back at the top, Tebow and Cavallari swap positions once again. Cavallari is back on point. Jared's pit crew watches anxiously, hoping that the drought comes to an end on this night. Jared has once again inherited the lead and has a three-quarter straight gap between himself and second place Cavallari. Ryan continues to press on. Racetracks around the world are a place for hopes and dreams. Sometimes they come true, other times they do not. RC is no different. On this night, Gord's hopes for a win fade. Ty will have to settle for a third place finish. At the front, Ryan Cavallari and Jared Tebow are still competing for the win. With a crop of young aggressive drivers hungry for glory, it's getting harder and harder for the veterans to remain relevant. On this night, however, there would be no substitute for veteran experience. Jared has waited patiently since the 2013 Neo race for another win. He now has it. How far will he ride this wave of confidence? A victory for Jared. Disappointment for reigning world champion Ty Tessman. Not the first time you won this race, but this one's gonna feel pretty sweet. Oh yeah, it feels uh, feels really good. You know, it's been a long time. Since that was tough. What was the hardest part? Probably trying to get through traffic without like losing so much time, which I think just made a couple mistakes and I'd go through a lot of people and just couldn't catch up. Yeah, it was a lot better than what we started with, and I'm pretty happy to end like this compared to how crappy the week started with Buggy, so it's good that we learned a lot of stuff and salvaged a 10th place start. I had a bum uh, buggy race, had some break in the clutch pretty early, which uh, kind of took me out of the running, uh, made the car basically undrivable. Uh, I tried to limp it around, but at the end it was just uh, too frustrating, so pulled off, watched Ryan and Jared battle. It's a good race. I'm stoked for next year, stoked for the world. I think well, it'll be fun. I'm disappointed. If we don't win, I'm always disappointed. Um, Ty drove good. Uh, flame outs, I don't have no idea what happened. We'll, we'll look into it. But he uh, he did what he needed to do, and we just needed to make a better car for him, pretty much. Glad it's over. <laughs> I have some work to do. <laughs> we, we're going to be back this winter for sure to do some more testing and All right, guys, get our whole again, team here and figure game. some stuff out for next so we'll see. It was like a big weight was just lifted off, you know, I've had a whole bunch of seconds and thirds lately. Um, just that weight just finally felt like it got lifted off in the buggy main. You know, went went great to get the win. Uh, I think I think both my cars, the setups I ran here, I think are going to work pretty good at Neo. So yeah, I'm I'm super excited to head back, get home for a day, and uh, head out there. Should be good. I'm stoked on my second. I mean, I wish could have maybe got the win, led a lot of the race. Just had a few mistakes halfway through. I mean, just kind of uh, got a little a little crazy. You know, but uh, yeah, pit guys were awesome. Car was working great, so off to the next race. I got to drive home tomorrow. I leave Wednesday morning for Neo Buggy. Um, I'm really excited about that. This is definitely going to be the best car I've ever had at Neo Buggy. I think it's going to suit the facility and the track really good. Looking forward to Neo? Yes. 
I love that race. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mere hours ago, the pits were full of life and activity. All that remains are a few discarded supplies. A hint of disappointment over poor results still hangs in the air. Disappointment does not describe this event, but rather pride. Pride that we witness the rebirth of one of the truly great American races, the Silver State. It's Vegas. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. I'm going home. Is it Nevada or Nevada? It's Nevada, right? Really? Hey, I, I live in Missouri. We say Missouri and we say water, water, and wash. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go with Nevada then. <laughs> <laughs> 